This morning's sermon, I'm going to start off with two scriptures. One is Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. And the second one is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. You might see the relevance of those scriptures as we go through the sermon. Ephesians 2, 8, 10 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is put for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but are the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. My sermon this morning carries on from Christmas. This will be the last sermon being relevance to Christmas. But that's an oxymoron because as we go through the sermon, sermon, you will find that Christmas never ends. Christmas is over. Christ has been born. Mary and Joseph relax, taking in this miraculous and exciting birth. New Year's resolutions have been made. Credit card bills will now start coming in for you all. Overspent at Christmas. Made a fool of yourself over the holidays, some of you might have done. Made some promises you're going to find hard to keep. Started an impulsive relationship out there, some will have done. Oh, I thought that was, I thought that was the Holy Spirit coming in, the door opened by itself. <laughs> Good morning. We'll start again, shall we? <laughs> Trying to mend things that went or were said wrong. But what now? God help me, a lot of people are saying. Season of lights are over and all the cheerful festive decorations are taken down. Merry singing and the music is silenced. All the good cheer and merry making it's finally sort of like, I don't know, it's not finally, it's just disappeared. Where is all the cheer? Where is all the singing? Where is all the merrymaking? Where's all the goodwill? Back to the grind of work. Nothing changed. And what was before is still here now. January to February, the winter blues month starts. Nondescript months, nothing happens. Nowhere to go. Where we live, hibernation from the cold and snow. <laughs> nothing happens in January, February, and March except for bills. Oh, yeah. wow. Nothing really exciting. Unless, unless, of course, you're a snowbird. And you're, you're really excited at the moment because you're under the sun, down in Florida, by the pool, enjoying yourself. But that's sad. That's sad. I feel sorry for those people. How about a birthday? Pardon? How about a birthday that's in January? Oh, well, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. Which is mine. But what do I do now? Looks as though it's back to the everyday mundane life and nothing has really changed. That's on the outside, but how about on the inside? Not in a physical, but did you make any changes in the spiritual, seeing it's the season of Jesus, and Jesus is the season. Did you ask for God's help? Did you accept Christ into your heart over this Christ mass season? Bearing in mind, he is the reason for the season. So what now? 
Keep asking, what now? Just as you've accepted Christ, so did Mary and Joseph accept Jesus, not only in their hearts, but into their family. When God is a father, Mary is the mother, and Joseph is now the adopted father. But I said, what now? Christmas is over, now what? And let me tell you, no, it's not. Every day is Christmas. Christ was born as a human to undo or reverse what Adam brought into the world in the garden. And what was that? Separation from God. What is separation from God? Sin. And death. We talked about that this morning, about separation from God. But this happens every day all over the world. Christ is reborn in the heart of every new Christian. John 31, 1 to 21. I'm not going to read all that. Obviously, I got the wrong one down. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one else can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? That must be John 3. Verse 1, I think. Mm -hmm. Defeating Satan and sin, which is separation of God in heaven, and spiritual death is in hell. The Roman church calls it Christos Massi. Where the word Christmas comes from means a celebration of death. Mass is death. Christos is Christ. It's a celebration of Christ's death. But we miss out the last S, join the words together, and we call it Christmas. Messiah, Emmanuel, Jesus, Son of God. Let me explain what I just said. We celebrate in remembrance in the form of communion. Remembering what the Christ, the Christ, it's not Jesus Christ. Jesus is his name. Christ is a title. The Christ is Jesus. Messiah, Emmanuel. That Christ went through physically and spiritually, spilling his blood before and on the cross. Genesis 3.15 says, Now I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Therefore, Christmas can be in February, June, July, September, or daily, celebrating both the physical and the spiritual birth of Christ in our hearts where the impartation came of the Holy Spirit. We remember in the form of communion, monthly, <clears throat> weekly, or some people even do it daily. I'm going to read a poem that was in the Baltimore paper, and it was the first winning prize, titled, What Would You Do If You Had One More Year to Live? If I had one year to live, one year to help, one year to give, one year to love, one year to bless, one year of better things to stress, one year to sing, one year to smile, to brighten earth a little while, one year to sing my maker's praise, one year to fill with maker's days, one year to strive for our reward, when I should stand before my Lord, I think that I would spend each day in just the very same way that I do now for from, from afar. 
The call may come across the bar at any time and I must be prepared to meet eternity. So if I have one year to live, or just one day in which to give a pleasant smile, a helping hand, a mind that cries to understand, a fellow creature when in need is one with me, I take no heed, but to try to live each day he sends to serve my gracious master's end. When the signs are no longer visible, does that mean the significance of Christmas is no longer valuable? No longer for thought of? No longer praised? No longer worshipped? No longer full of joy and remembrance? Christmas is over, now what? The month after Christmas, twas the month after Christmas, and all through the house, Nothing would fit me, not even a blouse. <laughs> now, this must have been written by a woman. <laughs> the cookies I've nibbled, the fudge I did taste, all the holiday parties, past parties had gone to my waist. When I got on the scales, there arose such a number. When I walked to the store, less a walk than a lumber. I remembered the marvelous meals I prepared, the gravy, sauces, and beef, nicely rare. The pies and cakes, the bread and cheese, and the way I never said, no thank you, please. <laughs> As I dressed myself in my husband's old shirt, and prepared once again to do battle with the dirt, I said to myself, as only I can, you can spend the winter disguised as a you can't spend the winter disguised as a man, so away with the last of the sour cream dip, get rid of the fruit cake and every cracker and chip. <laughs> every last bit of food that I like must be banished till all the additional ounces have vanished. I won't have a cookie, not even a lick. I'll only want to chew on a long celery stick. You women do some strange things, I'll tell you. I won't have hot biscuits or cornbread or pie. I'll munch on a carrot and quietly cry. I can see some crying going on here, just thinking about it. I'm hungry, I'm lonesome, and then life is bore. But isn't that what January is for? A neighbor to giggle, no longer a riot. Happy New Year to all, and to all a good diet. diet. <laughs> I know the feeling of that. My wife's already on a diet, and she's put me on a diet. <laughs> it is Christmas over when we take down the pictures and pack away the costumes and put the manger back in the closet, and don't forget to return the doll to whoever it belongs to. <laughs> when the signs of Christmas are no longer visible, does that mean that the significance of Christmas is no longer valuable? I want to focus on Luke 2, 19 to 21, and see what happened after Christmas that we can and should do to make Christmas all year long. Luke 2, 19 to 21. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. For they all heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of the eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. It says Mary pondered, which means think about something carefully, especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. She pondered and weighed. This is the original meaning of the word weighed. She kept them as she revolved them. She weighed them in her mind and heart giving to each circumstances its just importance and anxiously seeking what it might indicate respecting her child. It was bad enough for Mary, 
for the angel to tell her that she would bear the Son of God, that she was going to be made pregnant, a super immaculate conception. How can that be? Joseph is my husband. She was betrothed. She knew all this. The angel had told her. What a weight to have to understand that when you pondered that you were going to give birth to the Son of God. She probably didn't come into reality until the birth happened in the manger in Bethlehem. And there before her was an immaculate conception, the Son of God, the Christ, Emmanuel, him himself, him who only be to dream of, was here, born by me. Mary began to consider all the details associated with the miraculous birth of the Son of God. It means that she tried to put them all together. She tried to understand it herself in the hope of trying to better understand what had just happened. Glorifying God is the Greek word opinion, the right opinion about God, magnifying God, making him larger in our lives and spreading the good news. This was also said in that scripture, 2, 19 to 21. The number one cause of atheism in Christians, I will tell you what it is, is those who proclaim God with their mouths and deny him with their lifestyle, is what an unbelieving world finds simply unbelieving. You tell people you're a Christian, you go to church. Oh, they're all dressed up. See, they've got their best clothes on, their tie, their suit. They're going to church on Sunday. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they don't look like, they don't speak like, they don't walk like a Christian. So how can I believe that they're a Christian following a Christian righteous way when I know for six days of the week, it's unbelievable. So why do I want to be a Christian? It's what atheists see. What makes me want to be a Christian? What makes me want to believe in a God when it's only for one hour on a Sunday morning? And then the rest of the week, I can do exactly what I want. Praising God, Hebrews 13, 15. Praise is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Dimming the lights, silencing the carols, dismantling the decorations is not the end of Christmas, but the beginning of the celebration of why Jesus is the reason for the season. The Christ or Christ Mass. Worship and praise. Isaiah 7.14 says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. <coughs> Isaiah 9.6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Listen, Christmas means that God keeps his word. Every day of every year, past, present and future. So we can celebrate Christmas all year. When God says he'll never leave us or forsake us, you can count on that. You can take it to the bank. Why? Because he doesn't tell an untruth. Amen. God keeps his word. 
when God says he's going to send his son to catch away the saved, mark it down. Believe it. It's going to happen. Why? Because God keeps his word. When they say Christmas is over, now what? Well, I'm telling you, Christmas is not over. Amen. Because my God keeps his word 24-7, 365 days. And any time God performs a miracle, listen, every time God performs a miracle, it's Christmas to me. And it should be for you. Amen. Every time the gospel is preached, it's a Christmas message of hope. But that same message tells us that God loved us. So much so, he sent his only begotten son, that's Christ, Christ Mass, and that his son took our sin upon himself and died on the cross that we might live. The message of the gospel tells us that after his death, Jesus was buried and that he remained in the tomb for three days and three nights. And then, as the lyrics from the hymn, up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph o'er his foes, he rose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. Amen. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, he arose, Christ arose. Matthew 2, 1, 2 says, now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And in verse 9 of Matthew 2, it says, And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood where the young child was. Just as God led the wise men some 2,000 years ago, he still leads his people today. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lead not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and listen. And he shall direct thy paths. Amen. God is a person of his word. God never breaks his word. Amen. What he tells you, take it to the bank, it will happen. If we're going to enjoy Christmas all year long, we need to celebrate and contemplate the majesty and meaning of Christ, Christmas. Because they're telling you now, there is a saviour. And his name is Jesus the Christ. The 25th may have come and gone. You could have very well missed the greatest gift of them all. Quoting C.S. Lewis at the moment. Lewis hit the nail on the head when he said, we really celebrate two holidays on December the 25th. One we call Xmas. And the other we call Christmas or Christmas. Maybe we ought to separate them and understand they are different holidays. <coughs> Christmas and Xmas. On the Xmas side, we have a figure of Santa Claus. On the Christmas side, we have a figure of Jesus. On the Xmas side, we have symbols. A Christmas tree. Jingling bells in reindeer. At Christmas, we also have symbols, a manger, shepherds, and wise men. At Xmas, we have presents, trinkets that we buy, that often cost too much money that break or wear out. At Christmas, we have a priceless gift for free that will last forever and ever. And it's important that we separate those two holidays in our minds because you see, Grinches can steal Xmas, but Grinches can't steal Christmas. Circumstances can rob us of Xmas. 
Listen, if we can't buy gifts, if we don't have the money, if we aren't invited to the right parties, if we don't feel part of things, if the kids have gone away and aren't coming home to visit, if we are suffering of pain and hardship, if there's no snow on the ground, all these can rob us of Xmas. Because Xmas depends on circumstances, on presents, cards, celebration, and all the things to go with it. And if they are not there, we won't have a Merry Christmas. That's C.S. Lewis. Christmas means that God keeps his word. John 1, 1, 14, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. Let me read that again, changing the word Will word to Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and the Jesus was God, and the Jesus became flesh and lived among us. Christmas isn't a day, Christmas is a state of mind. Christmas is not being over. Christmas is never over. God was before, present, and after he became flesh. Keeping his word, what? 24-7, 365 days. C.S. Lewis said the Son of God became man to enable men to become sons of God. So should we celebrate Christmas? Well, let me tell you. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and those who dwell therein, Psalms 24, 1. If we give thanks and honour to God, in Romans 4, 5 to 6, on a day that is already his, because he made the universe, he made the earth, and he made the days. He made seven days, and on the last day he rested. So, if it's his day, on a day that is already his, then how can Christmas Day be evil? Some say Christmas is a Roman pagan holiday. But then we should honour and celebrate God on every day of the year. Why should we as Christians refuse to celebrate God on this day? After all, it's God's day. Man only usurped that day for his reasons and for his benefits. God owns it. God created it. God made it. God gave it to you. He wants worship every day, so every day is God's day. In fact, the Bible encourages this. Psalm 86.12 Give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Forever includes the day we celebrate Christmas. One final thing. Some have said of the decorated trees in Jeremiah 10, 1, 6. But it was not the tree that was sin, but the hearts of those who used them to honour false gods. There was nothing wrong with the tree. God created the tree. It was man who cut the tree down and carved images into the tree. It was not the tree's fault. It was man's fault. If someone honours God with a decorated tree as opposed to false gods, how can that be sinful? Christmas should be a time when we remember that Jesus came to earth to save us from Adam's sin. Christmas should be a time when we recall that God voluntarily became lower than the angels to be born and live, suffer and die for us. Christmas should be a time for us to remember that we as Christians have an obligation to leave the comforts of our everyday life 
to help those in need, just as Jesus did for all of us. Jesus came so that you could be where you are today. Jesus came to take all sin and bear it on the cross. You notice how I've said that in the singular, how the scripture says it in the singular. I did not say sins, which in effect means that all the sins in the world came together as one and Jesus took the sin to the cross. As we talked in Bible study this morning, sin is separation from God. So what that says is that all things that separate you from God was taken into one and Jesus bore the whole sin. Whatever it is that's separating you from God he took that. That's right. Glory to God. And what is one of the things that separate you from God? It's a little Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder called Satan. He tries to tempt you to do all things that you're not supposed to do. The most important thing why Jesus came to earth was to defeat Satan on the cross, to give back what it was that you had before the serpent came into the garden with Adam and Eve, to give you back what you had before that. Before Eve and Adam were at the fruit of the garden, he come back to give you that restoration. And how did he do that? By taking, not the sins, by taking all sin that separates you from God and bearing it on himself. Giving you back the authority, giving you back the pleasures, giving you back the fellowship that you had before the serpent came in the garden and when you walked as a human with God in the dusk of the day in the garden of Eden. Jesus never died on the cross just to simply take your sins as an individual person. He took all sin and all sin sounds a bit like me as being awesome and that's what we celebrate we celebrate Christmas as being born in order that he can do what it is that God had a plan to do and send his son as a sacrifice for you all and that's why we really and truly celebrate Christmas, is what Christ done for us, is going to do for us. And our only problem, or God's only problem, or Jesus' only problem, is a stumbling block. And that stumbling block is you. To understand what it is that he came for. And as soon as you understand what it is he came for, then you're going to be jubilant about that. You're going to be joyous about that. You're going to be happy about it. And you're going to understand that a little bit more.